Today on the corner, we're going to finish up our review on the Vox Lab Aquila, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Hey everyone, it's Jeff. Welcome back to my corner. I'm here to do a review on the uh, Vox Lab uh, Aquila. I've been playing around with it for a couple weeks now. I did an unboxing video and posted it a little while ago, so I just wanted to um, give you a bit of a review and what my thoughts are after tinkering around with it for a while. So um, here we go. So the Vox Lab Aquila is basically an Ender 3 V2 clone. It has a build size of 220 by 220 by 250. It has a 32 bit board and it uh, is a single extruder. It has X and Y tensioners. It has a really nice, crisp, clear display and a really responsive display. It has a glass build plate. So let's talk about pricing. Um, this is currently on their website at 179 although I have seen it as low as 159 US. Now compare that to the Ender 3 V2, which runs at 259 You're saving about $80. It is pretty much um, a one-for-one -one clone. Um, it has an old Creality board in it. It's running um, an older version of Marlin. The uh, screen is uh, responsive crisp the visuals are nice it's easy to read it's easy to follow along with so let's talk about the setup and the fit and finish of this product as you saw in my unboxing video it took approximately just over an hour in order to build this machine I did have a few challenges with the instructions on how to build it but Aquila does have some videos up directly from the manufacturer on how to put this machine together and I should have watched those first it would have solved a few of my issues so what I don't like is it has a rather um, cheap injected molded um, extruder here at the back um, I'm not a fan of that whatsoever I'm thinking it's gonna break at any time so that is something that you might want to watch out for and replace with a metal one soon um, and also a little nitpick is that when the x-axis is all the way to the top the uh, power cords actually block off the power switch, at least on my machine, so you can't turn off the machine. Like it's really difficult, but that's just nitpicking at this point in time. Overall, it's a very solid machine. It's um, it's a good clone. <laughs> um, like I, I, I'm kind of torn because of the fact that it's really nicely built machine and the enders are open source so Vox Lab put together a clone that was more economical so like at 150 960 bucks this is comparable to the um, the um, what is that the Elegoo Mercury right the Elegoo Mercury and it's got a few extra features on it again there's no auto bed leveling but uh, or filament runout sensor those are things that you'd have to add on if you required those but everything else seems really nice and once you get it together it seems to print well and that's kind of the um, the proof is in the pudding so to speak right is how does this print well let me tell you um, I first of all it came with um, this red translucent filament so I uh, had a bunch of test prints on the card. So I promptly started printing the test prints and they do come out really nice, okay? It does print really nicely. Um, the test print with the square and the pyramid and the circle and the spiral on it and the overhang came out really nice. The point is really sharp on the uh, triangle. It's very good. Um, the little hook came out really good for a little hook um, and the um, tool holder came out really nice now I was paranoid that I would run out of filament I did have this much left uh, but I went up ahead and changed the color anyways just to make sure I have enough for the print not knowing how much filament I had left but it came out really nice uh, it's quite smooth so I used the, so their their software is the um, they have their Vox lab slicer and their own proprietary software which to me looks like a older reskinned version of idea maker um, i did end up slicing a benchy in that 
and I ended up printing it and it came out absolutely beautiful. Um, so the slicer works quite well. It produces a very good product with their presets for this. Um, I use Prusa Slicer. So for me, I ended up loading up Prusa Slicer and they actually did have a Creality Ender 3 V2 profile. So what I did was I sliced the Benchy with that. And I can't tell the difference between the two of them. I use the same filament and everything. Knowing that and personally me liking to just use the one slicer instead of having a bunch of different slicers, I continued on my testing with my Prusa Slicer profile for the Creality Ender 3 V2. What do they call this? Now this is old school. If you go back a little bit, this is a Philillian Fel Malcolm, it's called. Um, and it came out um, actually really, really good. It's really nice. Uh, the details are nice, clear, and crisp of the 4850 hour print. Don't look directly into the eyes of the Christmas home. And it came out, it's using again translucent materials. You can see the infill lines in there, but it came out really nice. I like this. This is awesome. This did a really, really, really good job on this. It's a really good print. This After that, I decided to print this um, little music box here just to see how uh, the fit and finish and the, uh, the precision was as far as gearing goes. Um, as this is a mechanical part, everything fit together well. All the gears are working, they're meshing fine. They're, they're working really well, so the precision on this is quite good. Um, this is probably one of the first prints we're going to have that you can see the layer lines aren't too bad. Um, it does a really good job. As I say, I'm, I'm happy with it. it. It does what it's supposed to do. It prints properly. I did run after this a um, the chainmail test, which I'll show you, but the chainmail came out absolutely phenomenal. So it has really good print quality. So let me give you some final thoughts on this machine for a sub $200 printer, it does a very good job at producing the prints that you require. It has some little issues with it, like I'm not a fan, as I say, of the extruder or a fan of the power cord placement directly over the switch, but these are minor things. The bottom line is once you have your bed leveled and you have sliced your program either in their stock slicer firmware with their settings or even following an Ender 3 V2 profile on another uh, slicer, it, they, they come out good. They come out really good actually. Am I reviewing the Vox Lab Aquila or am I reviewing the Ender? <laughs> right? So, um, Oh, um, there is actually technically already firmware that you can put on these suckers that um, will make it look kind of like an Ender more, <laughs> right? So it might even be Ender firmware. I haven't looked into it. I'll get around to that at some point in time. Right now, I'm enjoying this printer stock the way it is. It's doing a really good job, so I'm not going to change anything on it at this point in time. Um, but you know me, eventually I'll, I'll throw Marlin on here, change the fans, do whatever. But for now, as a beginner introductory printer, it prints very, very nice. Um, it's easy to assemble. I haven't had any issues with it in the two weeks that I've had it. Again, I bought this printer with my own money should be receiving a complimentary roll of filament in order to test with this printer at some point in time. So I'll do a, a quick little review on their filaments, but I honestly, I don't think I need to. I've thrown, um, this is a year old filament. This came out fine out of the bag. Um, the Browns, a bit old. Um, 
I don't even know what brand this is, to be honest with you. This is Amazed. It looks great, the brown. This is Preline filament. This is a bulk deal, no name filament I bought. Um, and then we have the uh, Vox Lab filament. So it printed very well with any filament I threw at it. Mind you, they're all PLA. I haven't tried Pet G or ABS or anything. I'm not sure if it would be able to handle any of those, but as a straight PLA printer, this works great. So in closing, the Vox Lab Aquila is good value for the dollar. Um, when you can get this for $159, it's it's really a no-brainer. It's, it's cloned off of a machine that's over $80 more to $100 actually if you're getting it for $159 US. Like, and it prints so far, I, I can't complain about the prints. There's the minor details I can complain about, but they're minor. And for the price, I am really not gonna fuss about that. It's a good solid printer. It's made, actually, it's a subdivision of Flashforge, which has been in the printing business for quite a while. Um, so yeah, they know what they're doing. So I hope you like this review. I hope you like my thoughts on this printer. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below if you have any questions, concerns, or if you, any corrections for me, because I know you will, <laughs> leave them down in the comments, okay? And yeah, uh, please subscribe and help me grow this channel, okay? And until next time, peace out.